Hi there, Jason from English Raven here. This is a, another teaching materials design masterclass for you. And what I'm going to look at um, is something relatively simple in this tutorial. Um, at this point, I thought, well, you might be a little bit sick of the background template that you've been looking at in the previous tutorials. We've only really sort of looked at one, one style. So I'm going to show you something that, um, how to make a background. Uh, a header and a footer and a background for your document that is a little bit different, a little bit more creative. Um, it's something that might work a little bit better with younger ages, for example, if you're making material for younger ages or for older ages and you just want to make something a bit brighter and a bit different. And I call this the, the basically the bubble brick, uh, the bubbled brick uh, background. So you've got your document open here. Uh, notice that I have gone to page layout already and I've changed my orientation to landscape because again most of the stuff that I make these days I'm thinking you know there's more than one thing I need to do with this material I may need to present it up on a screen as well as print it out so um, I usually go with landscape um, just pull that back so you can see the whole page now what I want to do just to tell you my purpose here is to make a, 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 a sort of a, a nice colored brick background uh, for the uh, for the top and the bottom with a nice flowing curving shape to it and you'll see what it looks like when I when I get to it but this is just part of just playing around with your documents and playing around with how things look by manipulating patterns and shapes so I'm gonna click double click up here to go into my header and footer like so okay now I'm going to insert a square or rectangle I should say and I'm just gonna pull it over like that just to get it up there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a shape fill in okay and now instead of going for just one of these colors or one of these options up here I'm gonna to go to pattern now that when I open the pattern tab it gives me lots of different patterns and they look pretty bleak at the moment but I'm gonna go for uh, these bricks okay I'm gonna look for a brick pattern it's this one here you could go various ones but um, remember that patterns can be a bit bleh on the eye if you're not careful now if I just put that in like that well it looks pretty awful alright we need a bit of color we need a bit of texture so I'll go back to my shape fill back to pattern and open that up again now You've got a foreground and a background option in terms of your coloring and that's how you make this texture look a little bit nicer and a little bit easier on the eye okay so i'm going to start with um i'm going to go for a green look all right so i'm going to choose dark green as my foreground which is basically your outline and then i'm going to choose a lighter green for the background, uh, for the yeah, for the background. Now that's going to come out. I got a preview here, a sample, and that's going to come out pretty. Uh, well, the lines are going to come out pretty dark, which is a bit distracting. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my foreground now. I'm going to click on the more colors option, and you'll either get this or this, standard or custom. Now um, I'm going to go to custom, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this arrow. And I'm just going to pull it back a little bit just to lighten that slightly okay now you can see it's just not quite as bleak on the eye now look this is what it looks like when we put it in okay so we've got this nice brickwork pattern and what we'll do is we'll drag that off the page there off the page there and off the page over the top and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a um, a, a sort of curved look to this so I'm gonna pull this down a, a fair way I'm gonna pull this down to about here now I'm going to do the same for the footer and to do that I'm just going to click on the box I'm going to copy that box and I'm going to paste that box and then I'm going to pull that box right down until it's about the about the same as the top one like so now um, I'll get rid of my uh, if I go back to format uh, I'm just gonna get rid of the shape outline for the for the purposes of this so that we don't have that black line there I'm just gonna get rid of the outline now that by itself is kind of interesting isn't it you know you could um, use that as as your texture but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a nice flowing line a, a sort of bubble over the top of these bricks <coughs> 
excuse me. Now to do that, we stay in our header and footer and we go to insert and we click on shapes. And there's a couple of different ways you could do this. I'm going to do it just with a, a an oval to start with. Now all you have to do is pull your oval in like that. Okay. Um, and what we want to do is we make, want to make this oval really big. Okay. So pull it right over like so and right down like so. Now pull it as far over as you can until we get that you know, I'm pulling this right off the edge of the page, dragging it over, pulling it more, pulling it more until I get the kind of uh, look that I'm after. Okay, now all I've got to do is pull that up like so, pull it up down like so. Okay, all right, the, the curve is still a little bit too extreme. So what I'm going to do is pull it up even a little bit more until until what we see is the line, I don't know if you can see this on the screencast, but I'm pulling it up until it hits the edge of that brickwork there. And I'm going to do the same down the bottom here. I'm going to pull it down just until those curves hit the sides of the bricks there like that. Now that's, um, now our oval is um, basically, we just shift it over until we get it to the point where we want it. Okay. Now that's got a black line and that doesn't look too bad. I mean, that's that could be fine as is. Um, we could be a little bit sneakier with it. We could um, choose this option from the formatting and then we could make it a white fill. And then we just get a nice little uh, light green line that comes across there, okay? Um, and what we have now really is a, is a nice little, if I give you the, the print preview, if I go to print and print preview, you know, we've got this uh, this interesting looking uh, document now. It's got a it's kind of got a brickwork sort of texture to the background, and we've got this nice flowing bubble. And that's just sort of wow! Look, you know, whoa, there we go. You know, it's um, it sort of looks like we're looking through a colourful building wall, um, and it's just something a bit different. And this is the sort of texture that and the sort of look with those flowing lines that younger learners in particular might like. Um, and it looks really professional. Once you, you go back in and if I click close that now, that's going to come up faded because I'm now in the front part of my document. But we could now enter pictures and enter activities or stuff like that. And it's going to look nice and bright and, and a little bit more creative. You don't get that idea of just straight lines and squares. So that's um, how to make one version of the bubble wrap. Now remember, if I just go back into my header and footer, we could change the color scheme here. Um, I'll quickly show you how to do that. If I go to my, my top box and click on it, go to shape fill, go to pattern. All I need to do is change these colors here. So if I put, if I, let's say I want to go for more of a, say, a dark red color, okay, to make it look more like bricks, I guess. Um, if I choose those two, I'll choose this one to start with. I'll make that the background and that the foreground slightly darker. And voila, we can have a, a, a nice dark uh, red brickwork. If I do the same, I just click on that box at the bottom, go to shape fill, go to pattern. For my foreground, choose the darkest red. For the background, choose the next shade of red. We get that click on the oval in the middle just by clicking on that so that the, the boxes there appear. Um, give it a red texture like so and then choose white as your fill color, your shape fill and we've basically just changed that to a red red style. Now um, and you know you could make a variety of different colors and a, a variety of different templates and it could just be a different style that you use. Now it doesn't have to be a bubble like this um, I'll show you another thing you could do. If I get rid of that oval altogether, okay, now I'm going to get rid of that footer. I'm just going to delete that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this all the way down right off the page. If it lets me, yep. Now, obviously, we don't want a document that looks like that. All right, so I'm going to insert another shape. 
I'm going to choose this um, rounded rectangle option. And I'm just going to slide it in to start with. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to pull it right over like so. I'm going to pull it out, pull it down like so. And I'm going to, uh, to, I'll pull it back in the middle. This diamond here allows me to control the, the intensity of the curve. So I'll get it like that. I'll go for my red theme and then make the fill white. And we just get a nice gray outline there with a, a slight red shadow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that over to the side like so. Okay. Now we've, we're still, we've still clicked on that shape. So now I'm going to go home and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the same shape off to the side like so. Okay. Now you might just need to play around until you get your centering right. Okay, like so, like so, you know, just until you, you're sort of satisfied. Um, now, this is an interesting look because it's sort of like two pages now. Um, this is another way we could, you know, use this texture. This is good if you want to print this and create basically something that folds in half. Okay, if you fold that in the middle, it would open up like two parts of, a, of openings in brickwork. Um, but again, it will still work all right on the screen. You could have your first activity on this side and your second activity on that side. Um, and, you know, look, this is not the sort of stuff you see in books, but we're using a different medium now, aren't we? We're using um, something that you can put up on a screen as a presentation sort of style thing. And this can be like two open pages of a book. Um, but that texture is quite an interesting texture to, to work with. So that's uh, another thing you could use. Um, another thing you could do is just get rid of that shape and just put this in the middle and let the brickwork go right around your document. Okay. And pull it right over. And again, this is another, another interesting look. Okay. Um, it's not, uh, this is not one that I'd probably go for. But again, we're, at least we've got a border all the way around. We've got that brickwork style. Again, if I want to change the color of that, click on that, just click once on that background, go to format, go to shape fill and pattern. And let's see how it looks, say, in blue, shall we? All right, I'm going to click a dark blue here for the foreground. And wrong blue, sorry. I'll choose this blue here and now in this case what I've done is I've made the outline a little bit lighter than the brick color and again you know now we've got a dark blue color um, so there's a variety of colors and textures and it's just a matter of playing around with that shape fill in the pattern and playing around with the colors you know you could use a diagonal brick like that you know I'm not that keen on that but you know, that looks different. Um, and it's just a matter of changing our shape in the middle. And, you know, you could be really creative with this. You could leave that as a dark blue and then put white stuff in here. Um, I try to stick with a light background uh, for your core content, because especially if you put pictures or text in there, it needs to be um, very visible. So I tend to stick with a white. The only reason I chose that blue texture there, if in case you're wondering, is because... It gives me a, a, a gray outline, but it gives me a slight blue shadow on that line. And then when I put my shape fill back to white, it retains that gray border with a slight blue shadow. Um, look, this is one of those little finicky things, but I mean, part of materials design is paying attention to detail um, and being consistent. So that's, um, that's another little background that you might be able to come up with. Uh, it's just a matter of playing around in this foot, in this header and footer, playing around with the shapes and the lines and the textures. It doesn't need to be a boring straight line across there. Um, although I think for adults, I think they prefer to see something a little bit more simple and elegant. But especially if you're working with younger learners, um, you might like to mix it up a bit and try different shapes and try different textures with your background before you go um, into your into your main material and uh, start putting in actual activities and, and items. So there's the, the bubble brick or the bubbly brick um, sort of style. I hope it's given you something else to work with. Uh, this is Jason Renshaw from EnglishRaven.com.